Why eat these? Because it's the best food in the world. For over five decades, Don has captivated the world with his incredible story and undying love for a certain iconic sandwich, the Big Mac. I ate my first Big Mac on May 17, 1972. I started out eating pretty much nine a day for quite a while here. Since 1972, Don Gorski has been on an incredible journey devouring over 34,000 Big Macs and setting a Guinness world record in the process. While Don's love for the McDonald's iconic burger is undeniable, it's crucial to recognize the broader conversation surrounding fast food and its impact on health. Uh, people that say that Big Macs are unhealthy, I think it depends on the person. I think for most people, if they're unhealthy, it's because they maybe eat too much. Um, for somebody like me, if I eat two Big Macs and that's pretty much all I eat all day, but I like the fries, sure, but you know, that's one of the things where I feel like I can keep from eating and not gain too much weight, you know, so, but the Big Macs, I gotta have. Studies have shown time and time again the potential risk associated with frequent consumption of fast food. Should people eat fast food? Uh, no, <laughs> you know, this uh, says no. And it certainly needs to be very restricted and balanced with overall a healthy diet. Health experts warn about the high levels of calories, saturated fats, sodium, and additives present in many fast food menu items, including the beloved Big Mac. So eating fast foods, generally unhealthy. Eating it for 30 days on its own is a definite no-no. And I've seen experiments where people have Big Macs and they put them on their shelves for five or six years and they look essentially exactly the same. That's pretty freaking scary. The relish in the secret sauce has sugar, high fructose corn syrup, and corn syrup, and then another dose of sugar later on. So there's four kinds of sugar in here. Don's extraordinary feat is undeniably impressive. It's essential to approach the consumption of fast food with caution and moderation. As we delve deeper into Don's story, we'll explore the broader conversation surrounding fast food and how he's been able to eat Big Macs almost every day for the last 52 years. I probably will be eating Big Macs every day for the rest of my life. What is the total number of Big Macs you have consumed up to today, March, 2024? Okay, a second here. Right now I'm at 34,268. Wow. So your diet is you skip breakfast and then you eat a Big Mac for lunch and then you eat a Big Mac for dinner. Right. Is that, is that correct? That's correct. And you you don't eat the French fries? Not very often, nope. Okay. And do you drink Coca-Cola or water? Uh, I drink Coca-Cola. Uh, probably too much of it, but uh, it's my favorite drink, so I drink enough of that. Do you ever drink water? Yeah, once in a while, but like I say, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, like water is one of those things that really has, you know, it's got no taste, so it's not that much fun to drink. That's all. <laughs> Do you ever eat any snacks or is it just Big Mac every oh, day? No, I'll, oh, I'll have snacks. Like for me, like uh, a lot of times I'm hungry before I go to bed. And so I'll have a snack you know, probably about nine o'clock at night or something, because if, I won't sleep really good if I'm hungry. So we do have snacks in the house. We buy them when, when they're on sale. And I think a lot of them, I, we've got them stacked on top, top of a cabinet here. And I think most of them are, you know, outdated or whatever. They've passed their expiration date because uh, the wife and I just don't eat a lot of snacks, you know, that we can, you know, if we get a bag out, the bag might last, you know, a couple of weeks before we get finally get rid of it. So it's, it's like, yeah, well, there's snacks here. It's just that we don't eat a lot of them. Gotcha. But I guess you would say 90 to 95% of your total food intake is the Big Mac? Yes. A lot of days it's 100%. But yeah, you're probably right. Probably right if you say about 90% of it is just the Big Mac. And it's safe to say that the hamburger is your favorite food? That is correct. Yep. Okay. The meat itself, or is it? Right. Okay, the meat itself. And you never you never get sick of eating it? 
Uh, no, I never do. The best way to describe it is what I hear from other people. They, if they see me eating a Big Mac, they, there's a quite a few people that have mentioned that you look like you're eating a Big Mac for the very first time. So I guess that's the best way to describe how it looks when I eat one is that I look like I'm eating one for the very first time. When did you eat your first Big Mac? Um, I ate my first Big Mac on May 17th, 1972. And I actually ate nine that day. Nine in the in the first time you ate the Big Mac. Well, I, I ate three of them three at three different occasions. I went to McDonald's at eleven, got three, went back at five and got three more, and then I got three more before they closed. At that time, I was so hyper and everything else, and I didn't sleep very much, and so uh, I, I could really eat a lot of food. And that's actually when I I started getting you know getting some uh, meat to my bones was at that time. I was just a scrawny little person until I started eating Big Macs. So how long did you eat nine Big Macs per day? Uh, that only lasted for a little over a month. It, it was kind of like when you first, when kids first eat chocolate, you can't eat enough chocolate and stuff. And that's the way it was for me with Big Macs. I couldn't eat enough of them. I started calming down. Like I say, I started eating them in May. And by the end of June, I was down to two a day. Because like I say, my body just couldn't eat that many Big Macs every, you know, and that many Big Macs every day anymore. So that's when it got into a uh, more comfortable routine was at the end of June. Okay. What method do you use to track or document the quantity of Big Macs you've consumed? Okay. For uh, me, I, when I initially started, I, I use count calendars. My, I put my count every day on a, a, on a calendar. And then I also was saving the cart. So at that time, what when I first started out, my my count calendar was where I was working. I was a shoe shiner at a golf course, and I still have that calendar from when I started in 1972. That's one of my prized possessions. But that's where I was marking my Big Macs initially, and then the cards I was just throwing in the back seat of my car. I had a '66 Dodge Valero with a big back seat, and I was just stacking all the cards back there. Do you also keep the receipts? Yes, I keep the receipts, but a lot of people don't realize that, like, my McDonald's started receipts on October 20, 1994, and so every receipt they've given me since October 20, 1994, I have every single one, but before that, McDonald's did not give you a receipt. They had these receipts that they used, but they needed to keep them in order to, you know, keep track of how much money they were making. So, you know, if you accidentally went, got one of their seats in, in your, in with your meal bag or whatever, that means their, their money would be off at the McDonald's for the day. You know, their, their cash flow or whatever wouldn't be correct. So, um, like I say, initially the, the receipts were not supposed to be given to you, but I do have some of those originals. I assume you, you store all the cartons somewhere. How many cartons do you think you have? Okay, I had some disasters. If if it was up to me, I would have every single one yet. Because I'm obsessive compulsive, I, I feel bad if I don't have everything, like like every single carton and stuff. But I've had a couple of disasters, so I, I'm sure I got over twenty three thousand of the cartons in my house right now. But when I first started eating Big Macs, like I said, I, I was still living at my parents' place, and I was throwing the cartons in the back seat. But then I would box them up and put them into my dad's attic. And after I got married, I went back home to, to get those so I could put them in my house. And uh, my dad had thrown out almost all of them. And he said they were junk. And it's like, no, dad, they weren't junk to me. So a lot of my, there had to be, there weren't 2,000. I don't think there was 2,000 he threw away, but there was enough of them. And so I say I missed, I have some of mine missing from the initial eating of Big Macs. And then this house that we live in now, we've been here for, since 1979 and in 1990 our house got clipped by a tornado so I lost a few cartons when the with that and then also in 1990 I found a spot up in the attic where the mice got into the cartons and so I had to burn some so like I say if if it was up to me I'd have them all but it's just that life has disasters you know and so I, I do the best I can but like I say right now all the cartons before 2006 are in the attic and when people come and tour the house or whatever, they go in my basement. You can see the cartons from 2006 on. And it's kind of amazing, you know, like right now, that's more than 13,000 cartons in the basement that you you can, you know, can see, you know, or put your hands on and say, holy Mac, this is a big Mac that 
I ate, you know. So it's kind of cool. You've been eating them since 1972. Have you noticed any changes in the taste or quality of the Big Macs over the years? Uh, no, they're pretty much uh, the same. You know, the thing is, like with a lot of the stuff, like like bread and the burger and the lettuce, all that stuff's going to you know taste the same. The only thing you could possibly change is the sauce, and I don't think they change that at all. Um, like I say, it, it everything's you know just tastes the same and stuff. The Big Macs might be a little bit well. Let's say they probably have less meat in them than they used to have, but uh, Big Mac still tastes like a Big Mac. When you were eating nine per day in 1972, the big the burger was a lot bigger than it is now. Uh, well, the thing is, okay, I don't think is I think the burger was closer to what it was now. But remember in 1983 when they you know that one company said where's the beef and stuff, everybody made their burgers bigger and stuff, and so there was a phase in there where McDonald's went like with everybody else, and the patties got a lot bigger and and stuff like that. So. In the 80s, because of that commercial, that's when the, the Big Macs really had a lot of meat on them. And they were hard to finish in one, you know, to eat two in one day. That was a lot of work because there was so much meat and stuff. But it happened at a good time for me because I was working hard and stuff at the time and, and stuff like that. So it just seems like when anything changed with the Big Mac, it always was at a you know a convenient time for me. Has McDonald's ever reached out to you? Uh, no, the corporation itself, they... They'll send me a letter once in a while thanking me for the, you know, free advertising and stuff. But no, I, I don't get nothing from them. And, and that does not bother me. I mean, the thing is, um, I, I, I'm not looking for charity. And it's just like, for me, I feel that I should be just like everybody else and, and pay for them. And, and so that part doesn't bother me at all. The owner of the McDonald's I go to all the time, he's, he's really a great guy and he, he tries to do stuff for me and stuff. So for instance, they got a, like a big uh, painting of me in the uh, military McDonald's that I go to all the time. So that's kind of cool to have, you know, your picture up in the McDonald's and stuff. And whenever I hit another milestone, like, you know, whether, whether it was 20,000, 25,000, 30,000, we'd always have a big celebration at the, the McDonald's and, you know, we'd uh, be able to give, you know, meals to everybody and stuff like that. So he helps, he helps with all that stuff. So, you know, like I say he's a great guy to work with, but uh, like I say McDonald's corporation itself is just, they're just glad I'm there, I guess. Now, do you have any? Do you have any health problems at all? No, I don't have anything wrong with me. Well, I suppose uh, what I should tell you is I really haven't had a physical since 1986, and that was before I got my uh, prison guard job. And since then, you know, it's just I always figure a person should go to the doctor if they're sick. And I just I'm just lucky where I just never get sick, so um, I don't go to a doctor just for a physical or anything. The only thing I've really done with doctors in a, you know, since 1986 really is I've gotten some blood tests done because people wanted to know what my cholesterol was. And I think I've had 10, 10 blood draws since uh, 1986 where I had my cholesterol checked and my cholesterol is always so low that I told Mary, my wife, after a while that I'm not going to have, have any more blood tests taken because all my the cholesterols are always so low and they're not changing. It's just a, a waste of my time and stuff. So like I say, I don't even do the blood blood draws anymore. I just saw a doctor earlier this month and he says I'm in good health. My cholesterol this time was 156. Actually, that's the third time I've had my cholesterol checked. Um, in 1997, it was 158. And in uh, 2003, it was 140. It's kind of cute. And, and uh, when it was 140, the nurse called and she says, we're a little bit worried about your cholesterol being so low and i said well what do you want me to do eat three big macs a day because i usually only just eat two you know and then the lady just said well you know sorry i forgot you're that guy just forget about it you know so and uh another thing i got going for me is that my wife is a nurse practitioner which is like living with a doctor so if she ever noticed something was wrong i'm sure she would let me know what does she think about all of this oh she, she goes along with it and stuff like that uh she's a She's a great wife for me. You know, I have, you know, I, I was really worried I wouldn't be able to find somebody that could put up the, with the way I am. You know, I'm kind of obsessive compulsive about a lot of stuff. And she was a gal I could put up with it. And when I get in the news and stuff like that, she, you know, she, she does real well, you know, going along with everything and stuff like that. And, you know, she, she doesn't mind when people have to come in the house and stuff like that. So she, she handles it all really well. Now, do you, do you exercise at all? 
I don't know if you call it really physical exercising. I do a lot of walking in the summer times. A lot of times you can see me out, out, you know, we live out in the country here. And so you can see me walking, you know, miles away from our house, even, you know, a lot of times I like to do a six mile walk and stuff. During the winter time, I don't do much walking outside, but I keep myself busy and stuff. And because I'm kind of hyperactive and stuff like that, I do, I'm kind of like walking around all the time, even like when I'm in the house and stuff. So I'm able to burn off whatever calories I'm eating and still stay looking pretty good in pretty good shape. Now, if I'm not mistaken, there is a double Big Mac that's been on the menu or at just certain locations. Have you ever had one of those? Um, I've only had one double Big Mac probably in the last 20, 20 years. Okay, the first double Big Mac I ever had was in 1994. I had one in 1994, and then I had one, I don't know, must have been like about five years ago when they they had a double Big Mac out for a while then too, and I had one then. But currently with the current uh, promotion, no, I haven't had a, a double Big Mac with the current promotion. For me, I, I'm not interested in a double Big Mac. I just like the regular one. But in case you're wondering, if I eat a double Big Mac, it only counts as one Big Mac, just so you know. <laughs> now, did uh, Guinness reach out to you, or did you reach out to Guinness? I actually reached out to Guinness. I started writing them in 1981 when I passed 4,000 Big Macs, because I thought, hey, that's kind of a cool, you know, I thought that was a, a record of some type, and I thought they'd be interested in it. But they wrote back and said, you know, that's great that's, uh, that you ate that many Big Macs, you know. Just keep in touch, you know. They, they actually told me to keep in touch, so I was constantly writing them. And so after the years go by like that, I was thinking that I guess this was just going to be a personal world record because it just seemed like they were never going to be interested. But then uh, after 16 years after I first wrote to them, they got interested. In 1997, uh, when I started approaching 25 years of eating Big Macs every day, then they got excited about that. So then, you know, they had some people come so that they could um, get some proof and stuff. And then they were really satisfied with the proof. And then they gave me my, my first certificate would, was in 1997. Wow. So the proof was the cartons and receipts? Right. Yes. Anything that, you know, the thing is that I didn't just have all of, you know, so many, it wasn't just the thousands and thousands of cartons that impressed them. It was just, you know, I saved everything McDonald's, you know, it wasn't, I got the cups, I had, you know, all these different containers from different, you know, sandwiches and stuff like that. And uh, uh, I had my count calendars and they were just impressed with all that stuff. So I say that uh, there was no doubt, you know, they they knew there was, (laughs) this year was something that was really happening and that's what they needed to know. Has anyone ever tried to beat your record? No, I have to tell you, like in 1997, when, they they gave me the record. They had told me that they um, supposedly there was a guy in Houston, Texas, that got up to about five thousand, and then he couldn't eat them anymore. Well, in 1997, I was almost up to fifteen thousand already. So I'm sitting there like I'm not worried about anybody catching me because you have one you have to really love Big Macs, and the thing is, you know, to eat that many thousands, you have to do it day after day after day. Did you? watch the Super Size Me documentary? Uh, yes, I've seen it once. Um, what were your thoughts on that? Um, no, I think the movie has, you know, I think it's, the movie was a good thing. You know, there's a lot of people out there that they eat too much fast food and they don't do enough exercising and stuff. And like I say, it can be bad, bad for your health. But I was just thankful that um, Morgan Spurlock, you know, he came and saw me and stuff. And uh, I got like about a minute in the movie. But he showed that somebody like me could eat thousands and thousands of Big Macs and still, you know, look healthy and be healthy. And so I thought that was great. You know, don't just show one side of the story where it's bad for people, but show it that some people out there can actually eat McDonald's and stuff every day and still look healthy and be healthy. I always make fun of people at work, you know, and say, oh, I'm gaining weight. I said, well, you should try the Gorski diet. And, you know, I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> they don't like that. They don't like that. Now, what's the most Big Macs you have purchased in a single day? Okay, uh, I used to live in Hartford, Wisconsin for a while. And I, I lived in a boarding house, and this was before I got married. And the nearest McDonald's was in Fond du Lac, of course, and that's 40 miles away, so... A lot of times on Sundays, I would buy up to 25 Big Macs and take them back to Hartford with me. And then 
I would uh, microwave them at, I worked at a Chrysler plant. So what I would do is microwave them at lunchtime at, at the Chrysler plant. So like I say, I, I've been known to buy at least 25 at a crack. And then that's how you say it. I take them to Hartford with me and just microwave them in at the shop. Do you just put the rest in the fridge or you put some in the freezer? Um, sometimes it, it's some of both. Like I say, uh, like for me, even now, like when on Thursdays when I buy eight, I eat one fresh. I put five in the fridge, two in the freezer. And then the two in the freezer I take out on Saturday, put them in the refrigerator so that they're not frozen when I eat them on Sunday. So like I say, there's always going to be Big Macs in my refrigerator and freezer at some, all the time, pretty much. Currently, you go to McDonald's twice a week? That's correct. On Monday and Thursday. Okay. And you buy, I guess, a certain amount each time? Right. I buy, I buy six on Monday and eight on Thursday. And that gives me my 14 each week. Have you ever eaten a Burger King Whopper or another fast food chain? Okay, um, I uh, I had one Whopper, and that was in 1984. Um, I think it was in January. Mike had uh, take me a little bit to look up the date, but anyhow, a guy bet me five bucks that I wouldn't eat a Whopper. So I ate a Whopper, which was the only Whopper I ever ate in my life, and I used the five bucks to buy a Big Macs because in 1984 I could still get at least five Big Macs with five bucks. Did you like the taste of it? Uh, no, not really. Like I say, a Whopper had tomato on it. I'm not really a big fan of tomatoes with my burgers. So, like I say, it, it you know for me, I, I could would probably would almost eat any burger out there. It's just that I prefer to eat Big Mac because it's my favorite, you know, hamburger combination. You know, where with sauce, lettuce, and everything. So. There's other burgers like I've had Big Boys. I've I've had no oh, quite a number of Big Boys because I had those before I had Big Macs. They were good. There was also another place in town here. They uh they had a Tucker Twofer double burger, and I had one of those. I I tried every burger at least once, but nothing's ever matched up to the Big Mac. Now, is it true you have a statue of Ronald McDonald in your yard? Um. I used to. I no longer have it out there. Actually, my my son and I had to take it down because they took out. We had a, a problem with our septic uh, tank out here, so we had to have a mound system put in. So when they put the mound system in, they told us, "Hey, Ronald's going to have to go." So we we had to take Ronald down, and uh, we got him wrapped in uh, garbage bags in the garage so that we can keep him still looking halfway decent. So, but yeah, for quite a few years, he was out there. But then, like I say, once we had to have some none to our property, we had to take a, take him down. I don't know if this is true. I think this was on Wikipedia, your Wikipedia page. Um, it says that your taste buds have always fluctuated in sensitivity. So you often eat a Big Mac without being able to taste it. Uh, that's correct. That does happen. For uh, I worked at a Chrysler plant for about eight years. And one of the, the job that I ran for eight years was a, called a chrome plater. And so I was in, in between chrome plating tanks for eight years, and I was always working in this red smoke. And when when I started doing that job, they said that it might affect, you know, my taste and my breathing a bit. And I said, but it paid better. So that's the job I decided to take because it paid. And so, yeah, after being in that for eight years, my wife said it definitely affected, you know, some of my smell. And then... There's some days I can't taste anything and some days I can taste everything, you know. So it's part of, the, like I say, from taking a job that was kind of kind of a tough job to work. Mm. And, uh, you know, you have health health you know, hazards with certain jobs that you do. And I had one of those. So you still have that effect today? Yeah, as far as uh, what, uh, my taste and stuff? Yes. Oh, yeah. There, like I say, there was... Uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, you know, Mary wanted to go out to eat with her brother and stuff. And I'm sitting there like, well, I don't want to go out to eat today, really, because I can't taste nothing. She says, well, we're going out to eat. And so we went out to a place and I just had a sandwich and, you know, everybody else had whatever, steak or whatever. But like I say, I'm not going to waste money on uh, something really expensive on days that I can't taste very well. So, but like I say, I do eat other foods. It's just not a lot of them. Since 1972... You have missed eight days of eating a Big Mac. What were those days? 
Okay, the first time was January 4th, 1982. We had a really big snowstorm, and then when I drove over to McDonald's, they were closed. They never opened up, and so uh, that was the first day that I ever missed, and so that began the habit of me keeping Big Macs in the refrigerator and freezer. So uh, pretty much since 1982 on, we've always had extra Big Macs, you know, in the freezer or in the refrigerator. The second time I missed was um, August 27, 1988. It was a promise I made with my mom. It was just a dumb thing that we talked about. And, and my mom knew how much I love Big Macs and stuff. And she said, she just out of jokingly said, why don't you on the day I die not eat a Big Mac? So that you'll always remember the date. I said, okay. That ended up, you know, we were joking about it. But then after all, I said, no, I'm definitely going to do that. You know, so uh, when my mom died on April 27, 1988, I didn't eat a Big Mac. So that was the second day I ever missed. And, and then uh, there were three times that I traveled and I couldn't find a McDonald's. And I know you might think that's impossible, but this was in the 90s. And there was, you know, a few times I went out west. And I, if I went 600 miles in a day and didn't find a McDonald's, I missed, you know. So there's three times I missed because of traveling. And then there's two times I missed because of work. Being a prison guard is kind of like being in the service. So when they tell you that you're working an extra shift or whatever, uh, you can't say no, you're stuck there. So instead of working 18, instead of working eight hours, you work 16. And so there's been a couple of days where I worked more than 16 hours and I couldn't get to McDonald's before it closed. So I ended up going all, pretty much all day without eating, period. But it also meant a missed day of eating a Big Mac. So a couple of those were because of, of work. And the last time I missed was Thanksgiving Day 2000. No, that would have been November 23rd, 2000. I thought, I, you know, for Thanksgiving, McDonald's was always closed. And I, I thought I had a couple of Big Macs in the freezer yet, but... Come, come Thanksgiving Day that day, I checked the freezer, nothing, none in the fridge. And uh, with McDonald's being closed, I ended up having to miss. That was the last time I ever missed. It was kind of weird because the manager of my McDonald's said that, hey, I could have called her and she would have, you know, went to McDonald's and made one for me. But I I, I told her, like, you know, hey, if I screw up, I'm not going to make somebody else, you know, pay for my screw up. So uh, I, I just told her that from now on, I'm not going to ever miss you know, having a Big Mac in my freezer or fridge. So I say that's pretty cool for me is thinking that the last time I missed was in the year 2000 because, man, that's, I've gone almost 24 years now without missing. For your birthday, do you ever do anything special like put candles in the Big Mac? <laughs> no, we never do that. It's just another day. Like for me, it's like, you know, just well, like I say, it's just another day, and my wife or none of the kids really make a big deal out of it, but they know I'm going to have a Big Mac, and so it's just another day. Now, is it true that lobster used to be a, a favorite food of yours? Right, yeah. I, I always enjoyed uh, lobster. We used to have a, you know, what is they call it, a red lobster place in Fond du Lac, but they closed in 1996, so that was one of the places Mary would like to go out on special occasions, you know, like whether it's a wedding anniversary or her birthday, she would, she'd like to go to Red Lobster, and it's like, oh, I said, this lobster is pretty good, you know, so I pretty much consider that my, uh, you know, second favorite food, but the trouble is, one, it's expensive, and then once Red Lobster closed, I don't have the drive to drive 40 miles just to have a piece of lobster, so the last time I had lobster was in 1996. You proposed to your wife in the parking lot of McDonald's? Yes, I did. That would have been uh, September 22nd, 1975. Yeah, I proposed to her in the parking lot. I proposed to her at the same spot where I ate my very first Big Mac. And it, it just that I felt comfortable. Uh, a person like me, I'm, I'm not really comfortable a lot of the times when I'm talking about stuff like marriage and stuff like that. So after I ate a Big Mac, I said, you know, I asked her if she wanted to marry me. And she said yes, and I, I went, really? Because, <laughs> you know, a person like me is kind of hard to live with and stuff. And so, and then she said, yeah, I was ready to marry you after one week. So it's probably a good thing she didn't say that because that would have scared me off. But yes, I did propose to her at the same spot that I ate my first Big Mac. And that parking lot now is actually the, the new McDonald's. See, the old McDonald's, they tore it down and they built a new one right next to it. And so... Now, where the new McDonald's is, is right over the, my parking spot. And so when they did that, then when they opened up the new one, the, the boss had the spot where I had my first Big Mac. 
they had a booth there and they called it, he called that then the Gorski booth and they put my picture above the booth so that people would know that that was where I had my first Big Mac and that's where I proposed to my wife. So I say, if you go to this McDonald's now, you know, I can show you exactly the spot where, you know, where I actually ate my first Big Mac and I proposed to my wife. Did you eat a Big Mac at the wedding ceremony? Um, I ate one right before I went to it. Like I say, I got married around 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And at 11 o'clock in the morning, I went for a haircut. And then from the haircut place, I went to McDonald's for a Big Mac. And then headed home, got my tux on. And by 1 o'clock, I was at the church getting married. Wow. Let's say McDonald's goes out of business tomorrow. What would you do? Oh, Okay, like, you know, that I, that's not even a realistic thing to happen, you know, so I guess I don't worry about it. You know, this, there's always been rumors, too. There's been a couple of times where they said, well, they're going to quit making a Big Mac and stuff like that, and that's never happened either. I still have a feeling that the McDonald's that I go to all the time, they would probably keep making Big Macs just for me, even if they discontinued them. It's just there's so many people there that know me and, you know, they know about my record and stuff, so... I guess I'm, I really never have worried about what if there's never a Big Mac again. So if I had to ever change to another burger, I'd have to find something else that's comparable, you know. So I guess I'm not going to worry about that because I say it, it probably never happened. How much did a Big Mac cost when you bought it in 1972? Okay, well in 1972, when I bought a Big Mac, they were 49 cents. So, you know, I could get three Big Macs and a Coke or a dollar fifty seven because there was no sales tax back then. And that's why it was like I say, I could eat nine in a day for less than five bucks. And that was just I said, you can't beat that for I say being able to eat as much of something that you like. That was a good price. What are they today? Like four dollars? Uh no, they're actually five nineteen a piece now. Mm. So they've gone up more than ten times in, in price since nineteen seventy two. Did they always have lettuce? Like that shredded lettuce? Uh, no, they didn't. Don't didn't always have shredded lettuce. I've actually somewhere uh, I can't. It'll take me a while to find it, but um, they went to shredded lettuce. Uh, I think it was in the early '90s, and I got the date somewhere. But before that, they just used to put a leaf of lettuce on there, um, or pieces of leaves of lettuce. It wasn't there wasn't very much lettuce on a Big Mac initially, and that's the way I like them the best is with not so much lettuce on them. Because uh, I'm not eating the sandwich for the lettuce. I'm eating it to taste, you know, the, the meat if I can and stuff. So I say, when they went to shred the lettuce, I, I kind of joked with the other guys. I'm saying, they're like, oh, you know what that means? That means the patties will be getting smaller. And uh, there was a little, there was some truth to that. I mean, the patties did get smaller after they went to shred the lettuce. What did your coworkers think about your record? Did they Did they know about it? Oh, yeah, they they knew about it, especially when I started working for uh, the prison system. I, I started working at a maximum security prison in 1986, and that just just so happened to be the year that I started appearing on news programs and stuff like that. And being in a maximum security prison, well, like say all the inmates have a TV and stuff, so it didn't take long before all the inmates and all the guards knew that I had, you know, had this big max thing, and so... It was kind of, if you're going to have a world record, I went to just being in a maximum security prison because you take a, a lot of verbal abuse over the years. But I say I stayed working there for 25 years. I think I've heard everything you can say about a Big Mac in a negative way. <laughs> but uh, like I say, it wasn't an all bad with the inmates and stuff there. But, you know, because there's some of them that made things at the wood shop and stuff for me that are now related that are kind of cool and stuff. But because the prison guards and stuff all knew about it. After there was a couple of times that I missed having a Big Mac because of getting, you know, ordered and stuff, other prison guards started to take notes and said, hey, Don, you want us to bring a Big Mac in for you? So it ended up after uh, 1994, the last time I got stuck where I couldn't get a Big Mac. After that, I, I, I don't know how to explain exactly, but after 1994, any time that I was stuck working extra hours, there was always seemed to be a guard that would be able to go to McDonald's for me and then through the proper channels, get a Big Mac over to where I was working and so I could keep my streak going and stuff. So, yeah, I think pretty much everybody knew about it. And uh, there's a lot of good officers that helped me keep my record going. Wow. So most people were supportive then. Oh, yeah. Like I say, most people are. There's always the negative people, you know, and uh 
the thing is, I, I guess working in a prison that helped me out because anytime I had negative type interviews, you know, you know, when they tried to rattle me and stuff, it didn't because I had so much practice from the inmates, you know. So, yeah, if people are negative about it. I'd give them a pretty short interview and stuff like that. It's like, for me, you know, I just figure, you know, it's a good news story. And if you want to hear about it, great. And if you don't, fine, you know. What motivated you to do this? Because it takes a lot of discipline to do something for a long period of time like that. Okay, yeah. It's, and it's actually easy for a person like me. So like with my kind of OC, it, it's like, I don't like change. And so like for me, I like the same thing. If it were, if something is good, I like it all the time. And so when I started eating Big Macs, I said, they're like, well, this is my favorite food. And I'm going to keep eating them and stuff like that. Everything else in my life is, you know, the same way. I like Coca-Cola the best. So I drink Coca-Cola all the time. I still use palm olive soap. That's a soap that I always loved from, you know, from the time I got married on. We had palm olive soap, and I still use that kind of soap today. Almost anything, even with vehicles. I always like Dodge vehicles, so I usually always had Dodge vehicles until until recently. But it was just the way I've always been. It's to try, you know, if something was good, I keep using the same brand over and over and over again. Now, is it true that you've eaten a Big Mac at every NFL stadium? in every major league stadium? Okay, um, right now, I have eaten a Big Mac at every NFL stadium except the new one in Los Angeles. Okay, because I live in Packer territory, I wanted to, I'm not, I don't want to go to that last stadium that I need to see until the Packers play there and the Packers play there this year. So I'll probably take a Big Mac in with me when I see the Packers play the Rams in Los Angeles later on this year. And then I'll have all the stadiums again for football. I've already eaten a Big Mac at all the stadiums for baseball, and I've eaten a Big Mac at all the NASCAR tracks. Wow. And what about states? Uh, I've eaten a Big Mac in the 48, what do you call that, contiguous? I've eaten a Big Mac in the 48 states, but I had prison guards that brought me back Big Macs from Alaska and Hawaii. So I've eaten a Big Mac from all 50 states. Is there any other place you would want to eat a Big Mac at? No, uh, right now, like I say, the only thing that I have on my schedule that I'd like to eat one at is that the new Rams football stadium. Uh, it's the only thing that I really want to really eat a Big Mac at yet. What if you ate one at like the pyramids in Egypt? Yeah, I, I'm really not. I mean, if somebody could, you know, if somebody paid my trip there and back, just eat a Big Mac. I, I, I don't think I'd even be interested in that. Okay. I'm pretty much interested just in, you know, pretty much our country. I don't mind going to Toronto or Montreal once in a while, but I I pretty much just like being in the United States. It's it's a great place to live, you know, and I just don't care to go anywhere else. I listened to an interview a couple, maybe it was a month ago, and you mentioned that you would love to have a Big Mac museum. So if you just tell us about that. Oh, that, that's just a dream that I've always had. Like with me, I have so much McDonald's stuff in this house and it would just be nice to be able to show it to people, you know, in a museum type setting or something. You know, like people come to my house to see this stuff. They're just overwhelmed. And I, I can't only show them a little bit because most of my stuff is in the attic. And it just seems that when somebody has as much McDonald's stuff as I have, I mean, it's like the history of McDonald's is in my house. And it, it goes back to 1972. And if people saw some of this old stuff, they would just be flabbergasted at, wow, you know, you still have that stuff. So like I say, I, I've, I've got enough to fill a pretty big size museum. So uh, like I say, it, it would be awesome if I could afford it. But I keep telling people when I win the lottery, then that's when my next project will be is to make a Big Mac museum. So people reach out to you for a tour of your house. Yeah, I'm pretty picky about who comes here. I say I, I, you know, being a prison guard and stuff, it's it's hard for me to uh, trust people really well. You know, I say you work in that environment so long, so we're I'm very protective of my stuff and that. So, yeah, people, you know, it's easier for me like to have the media, like say if a TV station or newspaper reporter wants to come into our house, it's just easier for me to give them you know, a tour than it would be if somebody just out of blue call and said, hey, can I tour your house because I don't know them or can I trust them and stuff like that. So 
Like you say, that's just just the way I am. Like I say, I was brought up to be protective because, like I say, when I started working at the prison, we used to get phone calls all the time. My kids would answer, and they, you know, the kids would answer, and uh, the the you know, person would say, "I'm going to kill you" and stuff like that. And so we ended up having to get a disconnected, I, I mean, uh, unlisted phone number and stuff. So you're always doing stuff to protect your family and stuff, and it, that really sticks with me even to the to today. Mm. The prisoners would call your house oh yeah back then inmates you know had access to phones anything they, they, they could go to you know into the library look up your phone number in the phone book the whole ball of wax so you know they like say when you work in a max prison like that you just you just got to be careful all the time yeah now do you charge at all for people to come do a tour uh no i i don't you know there's been a lot of people have gone through it it's just that i I just couldn't, oh, I'm not interested in charging people to see, to see it and stuff like that. I just wish I could have more, you know, have a place that's secure and stuff where people could see all the McDonald's stuff, you know, from 1972 on because it's an amazing thing to see. I wonder if you pitch that idea to McDonald's, what would they think about that, a Big Mac museum? I don't, I don't think they'd be that interested. I guess they have a museum for the, the guy that made the first Big Mac. I think there's one in, well, I've been there. There's one in, it's near Pittsburgh, I know. And there's a museum that's dedicated to that Jim Delegati who invented the Big Mac. And he, they call it a Big Mac, Big Mac Museum there, but I've been there and there's hardly nothing in there. I mean, for me, I, I've got enough to fill up the Milwaukee Museum if they wanted it. But, you know, you got to, for me, I, I just wouldn't have a place, you know, large enough by myself to show all this stuff. Is any of your stuff in any museums around the world like any pictures of you or i don't think so they say nobody's ever told me anything or anything like that so no i don't think anybody else knows about it really do you have any plans or goals for the future related to your big mac consumption record um i really don't consider it a goal i like for me i'm gonna you know eat big mac until i i die or whatever for me okay the there's one thing that what I probably would like to do is make it to 40,000. And one of the things, it's for a really dumb reason, because back in the, the 80s, my youngest brother, he gave me a thing that said, you know, it was, he made it up just like a label on a cigarette package where, you know, he made it really nice. And it said, uh, eating 40,000 Big Macs may be detrimental to your health. You know, he had, it, it was made just like a cigarette label, you know, where, they inform you that doing this is dangerous. And he made one of those things and it, it lists on there 40,000. And I'm sitting there like, well, that'd be cool to make 40,000. And then I could show him that his uh, label's correct, you know, that somebody could actually eat 40,000. So it's just dumb. But like I say, 40,000 is a cool number. And I don't think I'm going to get, you know, much further than that because, like I say, I'm getting up here in age. So you're at 34,000. And that would take. How many years do you think to get to 40,000? Okay, it it takes me about seven years to do a 5,000. So next year in March, if I'm still alive, I should hit 35,000. And then seven years after that, I should hit 40,000 if I can keep eating two a day. So you're looking at about uh, eight years from now before I can you know reach 40,000. So you're talking 30, 32 at least. Okay. And by then I'll be getting close to 80 and who knows if I'm even going to be around. So I guess around 78, when you turn 78, you'll start creeping on it? Yep. If, if I'm still able to eat two a day. Okay. Yeah. Like I say, I'm, I'm a little bit worried too that, you know, as I get older and older here, am I going to be able to eat two a day? Because there are some days I eat two now and I'm pretty full for the whole day. So like I say... I, I'm assuming everything will keep going as normal and I'll still eat two a day, but, you know. So, yeah, you're talking at least uh, I'll be 78, probably at least. 